Hey everybody, this is the fourth here, and in this video, I wanted to introduce you to the chorus effect. So, chorus effects are pretty similar to flangers in the way they work, but the desired effect is pretty different. If you imagine a real chorus, a group of singers, with everyone singing the same melody, each individual will sing at a slightly different pitch and with slightly different timing. If the chorus is performing well, these differences will be very slight and produce a certain kind of effect, and fullness that is rather pleasant. And this will happen when other instruments play in unison as well, not just with vocals. And this kind of effect is what chorus effects attempt to recreate. So how it does this, as mentioned previously, is similar to how flangers work. One or more delayed signals are created and then that delay time is modulated. Now, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure about that, because I did do quite a bit of research and different sources described slightly different processes. Some said that the frequency was modulated, others said the delay time was modulated, and some said that the frequency modulation is achieved by delay modulation. So, it may be possible that different courses work differently, technically, but either way, the result will be very similar. And you can see this here. Uh, I have a course with all of the LFOs set to the same speed. And you can see it moving here. And now here's a fruity flanger set to the same speed. So it looks like it's working in a very similar way. And so if you made me tell you an answer, I would say that the fruity course at least works based on multiple flangers working with separate LFO speeds. So now in the rest of this video, to give you a better idea of how the course effect works, I'll be using the fruity course, but again, it should translate pretty well most of the parameters to other different course effects. And if you're using a different course effect with more or less or just different parameters, it would definitely be a good idea to check the manual and make sure you know how exactly the course you will be using works. So like I said before, it is very similar to flanger in terms of how it works. And it's really just kind of multiple delayed signals with similar parameters. So here is the sound going through the chorus with the settings set to be as minimally active as possible. And you can see in here that it's practically just the original saw wave. The tiny difference you will hear is because I can't set the delay any less than 0.05 milliseconds. But you'll see if I increase the delay that the signal will be split into a couple of saw waves instead of just the one. And really what's happening is it's splitting it into three separate ones, but they are all set to the same parameters right now, so it kind of seems like it's only one delay. And the delay time for all three is determined by the single delay parameter. And with the Fruity Chorus, you can set a much higher delay time than you can with just your usual flanger. And then the depth also works the same way as a flanger. It just adds even more delay time. And then the delay time of the signals are modulated between these two values. So they will change between 8.5 milliseconds and 8.5 milliseconds plus 4.8 milliseconds. And you can see this when I set an LFO frequency. And right now I'm still keeping all of the parameters the same for the three different delayed signals. And I've also turned it to show only the wet signal. So now it's looking just like a wet only flanger again. And then you also have this stereo parameter, which works the same way as it does with the fruity flanger, except that it only goes up to 180 degrees. And so you can see that if I set it at 180 
degrees, the left and the right channels, instead of having the same movement, they will have opposite movement. And you can set it anywhere between 0 and 180 to achieve you know, a different amount of stereo difference. And the 3D course allows you to change the LFO shapes of the delayed signals. And you can change it from a sign to a sign to the third, or a multi sign, or a multi sign to the third. And if I show you these, you can see that here's the sine wave. Here is the sine to the third. Here is the multi sign. And you can see the movement is kind of a little bit weird here, and that's because it's being modulated by multiple sine waves. And then there's multi sign to the third. So the shape of the different delayed signals is something you would want to play with to get the desired sound. And now the cross on the fruity course is different than the cross on the fruity flanger. What the cross on the fruity course does is it filters your wet signal. So you can change the cross type between a high pass filter and a low pass filter. And then you can change the cutoff of that filter using the cross cutoff parameter. So you can hear that if I change the cutoff value and increase it, you should hear that this wet sound has the low frequencies filtered off. And alternatively, you can use the low pass filter and filter off the high frequencies of the wet signal. So this can be useful if you want to only add the chorus effect to certain frequency ranges. So if you have a sound and you just kind of want some stereo separation in the high end, and maybe to smooth out the high end a little bit, you can you know, set the cross type to a high pass filter and set the cutoff pretty high. And that will just apply more of the effect to the higher frequencies than it will to the lower frequencies. And then finally you have your wet only parameter, and if it's set to yes, you will hear only the wet signal. If it's set to no, you'll hear the wet and the dry signal. The real power of the course is in setting different LFO shapes and different frequencies for the different delayed signals. Some courses may even allow you to change the delay and depth times for the independent signals as well. And so you can see that when I change the frequencies of the different LFOs, it will really create that chorusy sound, and it will sound like multiple saw waves are playing together, and just kind of help fill out the sound. And so just like with the other effects, getting the sound you want will take some playing around and getting used to the parameters and just deciding what sounds good to you. Uh, there are also definitely presets you can always play with. But yeah, the chorus effect can be a great way to add some stereo depth to a sound that is mono or isn't quite wide enough or just to smooth up certain sounds and make sounds sound a little bit fuller if you don't have the option to use uh, the actual unison in a synthesizer, or use other recording techniques to produce that really full sound.